Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today we're doing the standard best of one meta breakdown where we look at the top performing decks on the MTG Arena ladder. Uh, this is kind of coming close to the retirement rotation, so uh, we're going to see some eventual shakeup when sets rotate out come uh, Dominaria United in September. Uh, but we're going to look at what's currently doing well if you want to make your last minute push to Mythic uh, with this standard set in mind. Uh, we get the data from Untapped GG, which you see on the screen. It is a companion tool that runs alongside your arena client, tracks your win rates, loss rates, uh, does deck collection, so you can see what cards you have, what decks you can build, a whole bunch of useful free functionality. Uh, you could click the link in my video description, it'll show you how to install it for free. Uh, I'll also paste all these deck lists into the arena, uh, sorry, into the video description, so then you can import to arena. And uh, it's easier to, if you have untapped, you just click copy to MTGA and you can get started. Um, just as a couple programming notes before we dive in, uh, this upcoming weekend is the MIQ, the Mythic Invitational Qualifier. Yeah, the, it is alchemy. Uh, this week is best of one, the following week's best of three. Uh, so I'll do a video for the best decks for those formats, for those of you who are qualified or who want to kind of take a chance, pay in, and try to get, like, you know, compete your way to the, the Mythic Invitational, ideally. Um, beyond that, we'll do a regular Explore and Historic. Uh, as a general programming note, I will be off in mid-August for a couple weeks uh, for vacation, so we'll put a hold on these meta videos. I'll try to get some content out while I'm there on vacation, though. Um, and if anybody has any good suggestions in Lisbon, Portugal, I know some folks that do watch are from Portugal, drop it in the comments. Let me know what I should see, do while I'm there. Um, but we will jump into it. This is July 31st through to August 7th. Platinum to Mythic. 110,000 games of Magic the Gathering have been played. Uh, and the top performing deck of the week is Green White Selesnia Enchantments. Uh, so they've, we've seen kind of a move away from runes. This is a 69.9. Nice win deck rate. And this deck here is looking to play enchantments to get value. So you have stuff like Kami of Transients or Generous Visitor, which could allow your things to get bigger. Uh, Jukai Naturalist reduces the cost of your enchantments. We've seen this in runes, be able to cast runes for zero mana. But this version here, you have stuff like... Uh, so Weaver of Harmony is kind of an engine in this deck, similar to what you'd have like Runeforge Champion, perhaps, in the runes version. Uh, this one gives your other enchantment creatures a buff, but it also lets you double up your activated or triggered abilities. So stuff like, for example, Circle of Confinement, you can now get it to double up uh, and exile two creatures. So you kind of get value like that. You can do your Sagas, Mashiko, you can do chapters one and two. Um, notably, you can't copy chapter three and get two flips because there's no backside. So keep that in mind. But ideally, you want to have a big trampler with either like Kami of Transients or something you have with Rune of Might on and then you throw the Mashiko trigger on it, make it really big, smash into your opponent. The only thing looking at this deck list is I'd say you probably want a couple creature lines. Um, just helps you in the event you run into creatures, you could put stack counters on or stuff like that. Um, but if you're looking for like an enchantment based deck, uh, check this one out. The next deck up is Boros Burn, Boros Aggro. This is increasingly, or this has been pretty much the top of standard for the last two months. Um, so I have kind of my same spiel every week, but it's basically a Boros kind of aggressive haste modified burn sub theme deck. So you have stuff like Thundering Raiju that puts counters on things and then deals damage. It's got haste. You have Sunrise Cavalier that gets bigger, has Trample Haste. Uh, Luminar Gasparin puts counters on things. Kumano puts counters. Hopeful Initiate uh, allows you to train and put counters on itself. Uh, you have Bloodthirsty Adversary that can flash back uh, your burn spells and play with fire, royal eruption, or valor stance. You sometimes see the valor the valor stance be swapped with angel fire ignition uh, to give you lifelink and kind of hedge you in the mirrors. I kind of like that version better, to be honest. That would be my switch. Uh, and then you have brutal cathars as your last piece of removal. Jumping to this, we go to Naya humans. This is sixty percent. So it's pretty much mono white splash red and green. And the reason you're splashing red and green is for Halana and Alana predominantly, as well as Sigarda. So Halana uh, makes any creature you cast afterwards have haste, get some bigger, you put counters on things, just lets you smash in for a lot of damage. Uh, Sigarda is an anthem for your humans, but also when you have Coven, so three power, three creatures with power that's different, uh, it lets you uh, put a creature card into your hand that's a human. So kind of get the value there. 
uh, yeah, Halana is a human as well. Uh, and then you have Minsk and Boo, which is just another, it's a, it's a creature that's a human that also creates another creature and it lets you sink your mana in if in the event you flood. But a lot of similar elements of the hue, the mono white decks that we've seen, uh, Hopeful Initiate, Luminarch, Thalia, Intrepid Adversary, uh, Adelaine, Brutal Cathar, Spellbinder, kind of all mixed into there. So this is an aggressively slanted deck that wants to go a little bit bigger with the addition of the additional colors. Uh, and then we see a version of Mono White Agra. Uh, so this is kind of an older school version. Um, the, I kind of categorize Mono White in like two buckets. You have the, the Cast 2 theme, uh, where you want to cast multiple spells per turn, and then kind of the um, more traditional, what we've seen more recently, Mono White Agro, where there's uh, the curve is higher on the three mana slot uh, with a lot of powerful three drops. Uh, this version here, you can kind of see it's a little bit dated, still in the times of the Faceless Haven. So you should just play regular planes. There's no benefit of having snow covered planes in this deck. And if your opponent's on Redain, it actually makes your mana worse. Uh, in this version here as well, you should be playing in a Janjo, the Channel Line in white as well as some Cave of the Frost Dragons, at least two of them, uh, just to help out your overall uh, line base. Uh, but this version here is the cast two spells, so stuff like Clarion Spirit wants you to cast two spells in a turn, stuff like Monk of the Open Hand, stuff like Code Spell Cleric, uh, you're able to put counters on stuff with like Guiding Voice, Homestead Courage, and then you just got a lot of weenie creatures, Kabira Takedown as a removal spell, Skyclad Operations, Maul for kind of a way to go over the top of your opponent. And then you have a lesson board here. Uh, you should fill it up with more. It should be um, pretty much like the white unblockable lesson. There should be um, mascot exhibitions. Just play useful lessons in there. You're allowed seven, so play seven. Play what you're allowed to do. Um, this one seems kind of more of a budgety version because if we look at it, it's so Luminarchs are rare, and then Skyclaves are rare, Intrepids are rare. So you got like, oh, this is a mythic, but. 10, 12, 6, like, like 14 is not bad for like a, a competitive deck. Uh, then we move to Mono Blue Delver. Uh, so this is kind of a tempo shell. Um, so you have a bunch of cheap one drops, Ascendant Spirit, uh, Delver Secrets, and then a whole bunch of protection spells, Fading Hope to you bounce your creatures or your opponents, March for phase out, slip out the back to phase out, Spell Pierce for protection. You have creature counters, bounce, just a whole bunch of counters mixed in there. Spectral Adversary can flash in and protect your stuff. Uh, Dream Shacklegeist to uh, kind of control your opponent's board. You got Graxalax uh, to draw you cards. Geist Snare is a cheap counter. So in this deck, it makes sense to have Snow Covered Islands because it powers up the Ascendant Spirit to buff it up in future turns. From there, we got to a, you know me, I like my mono red decks. Uh, this one's kind of cool. It's like an artifact themed mono red deck. This one's at 58%. So you're playing a bunch of cheap artifacts um, that power up Patchwork Automaton. Uh, and then you have stuff like Smelter that can sacrifice cheaper artifacts and then upgrade them to three ones. You got Royal Eruptions, uh, Dueling Rapier, uh, one mana flash, it equips a creature and then it gets plus two power. Eater of Virtue takes like stats. So if it's like got like trample, lifelink, whatever, it gets added onto that. But it's also just a one mana to give two plus two power. Uh, stuff like Fireblade Charger, if it's equipped, could get haste and also redirects damage. Iron Apprentice, you can throw counters on other things. Kamano puts counters. You got the Ronin combo, so you can keep casting Ronin every turn to put counters on it. Um, so kind of some value there. Um, and in this version here, you got Sokazan. You should be playing Den of the Bugbear in this deck. Uh, this might be all, other than the Virtue, it's all uncommons or commons. So this is a very budget-friendly deck as well. But if you have Den of the Bugbears, play those in there here as well. Uh, from here, we go to Is It Mill. And this is, according to Reddit, the most vile, toxic thing, other than life gain that you can be playing on the ladder. Uh, you should build every deck to have 250 cards so you can beat this. Uh, but this is a deck that's looking to ideally cast Dual Strike or Galvanic Iteration and then copy Tasha's Hideous Laughter to exile a bunch of cards or Maddening Cacophony. Uh, you have Rune Crab to mill with stuff like Maestro's Theater to get two Landfall triggers, same as Evolving Wild. Uh, and then the rest of the deck is just kind of interaction that's cheap, Fading Hope to bounce, Frostbite to bounce. 
uh, and then kind of card advantage and expressive iteration and seize the spoils to set up your draws. From here, we go to Teamer Aggro. So it's funny, this one was last week was Teamer uh, Control, this week it's Teamer Aggro. So uh, it depends on how fast you win, I guess, right? Um, so this deck here is a Is It deck that's only green for Titan of Industry. And what you're trying to do with this deck is um, ramp up with like the treasure package. So you have stuff like Fable the Mirror Breaker tokens to make treasures, you have Goldspan Dragons, um, and you're just kind of controlling the board. You use your treasures to uh, cheat out like a Titan of Industry early on curve, or with Goldspan Dragon, just kind of get extra value. You can make copies of both the Goldspan and the Titan of Industry with the Fable of the Mirror Breaker, the Reflections of Kiki. Other than that, the deck's got just like a lot of controlling elements, counter spells, card draw, and removal mixed into it. And then lastly, Mono Black uh, Control. This one is a little bit more mid rangey, but it's Mono Black Invoke Despair um, with uh, Blood on the Snow on the top end. I didn't realize this got new art. I was confused when the, I saw just the thumbnail. Uh, I think I like the original art better on it, but Skull Perp Merchant back in these lists. You have stuff like Tenacious Underdog to come back from your graveyard, Meat Hook, um, just kind of controlling the early game. You got these like weenie style creatures. Notably with this version, there's no lesson board. Um, so you're playing more to the board, uh, just trying to grind out your opponent with value. And then you have your like Lull, Soren, Invoke Despairs as your big over the top mechanics. Um, so that's it for the week. As always, to kind of show what I've been doing on the ladder for folks. All my public profile is always available. I did a thing this month if you haven't caught, uh, seen, but I hit number one mythic um, in preparation of the upcoming alchemy uh, MIQ, which I qualified for. So I hit it with uh, mono red in alchemy where I had an 80% win rate with the deck. You can find the deck and the video on my channel. Um, but as always, you can see what I'm playing in different formats. Uh, you can see as well with like events, um, just any of the events that I played in. You can see win rates, stuff like that. Um, I have done a bunch of uh, Explore, I was just playing in the play queue, testing out some, but we had some cool decks, some cool runs with it. So this is all like the functionality of Untapped if you want to check it out, but uh, my profile is always linked. Uh, I'm very much the, if you're going to make a claim that a deck's good or bad, have stats to back it up. So everything we do here is about stats and proof of kind of in the receipts, but in any case, Thanks for watching. Like I said, we'll get some alchemy um, prep decks for the upcoming MIQ to get folks ready for that. Uh, we'll do our regular content in terms of Explorer and Historic, and then I got some uh, gameplay videos throughout the next few weeks. Uh, appreciate the uh, continued support while I am off, uh, and uh, we'll gear back up afterwards in September when the new set drops. We'll be out with deck techs. Um, meta videos and gameplay as well. In any case, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great one and stay safe out there.